In this video, I'll be introducing Hilbert spaces. Okay, so definition. Um, a Hilbert space, a Hilbert space is a vector space over the complex numbers, so that means that scalars, scalars are complex numbers, and then the vectors are going to be like column matrices. Like that, of complex numbers. Okay? Is a vector space over C with the additional structure uh, with a uh, inner product with an inner product I'll denote it dot dot that takes in two I'll call this bottom space uh, this Hilbert space V it takes in two vectors and I'll output a complex number and it sends a uh, uh, the pair v w to the uh, the inner product of the two denoted like that. I'll denote it with a little cross in between them instead. Okay, and what you'll do here is that we're going to have a couple properties of it, namely that uh, this is always bigger than or equal to zero. Equality, so it's equal to zero if and only if v is the zero vector, the vector of all zeros in every single slot, right? OK, um, it'll also have. The property that um, alpha times v plus beta times w inner product with u is equal to alpha times the inner product v with u plus beta times the inner product w with u. Okay, and thirdly, is that we're going to have that the product between v and w is equal to the inner product of w with v complex conjugate. So it's conjugate symmetric. OK, now what we define is we define, define um, the norm of x to be the square root of the inner product with x in itself, or v, I'll call it, v, 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 okay? And then we define the distance, the, uh, the distance between v and w to be the norm of w minus v because this is a vector space. Okay, now there's one more condition. Very strange condition. Is that, um, with involving this, okay, it's not necessarily strange, it's just that the absolute value of the inner product with V and W has to be less than or equal to the, uh, Norm of V times the norm of W. Okay? And this is the Cauchy... Cauchy... Schwartz... Equations. Okay, this is the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. 
not equation. So it's the Cauchy Schwartz. And we have one more one more uh, property is that if the sum of the norms of vi from i equals 1 to infinity converges, then the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of vi without the norm converges to some point in v. Okay, what does it mean for it to converge in this? Well, that means that the distance between them is arbitrarily small. We say that uh, a sequence vi converges to v if the limit as i goes to infinity of the distance between v and v i is equal to zero. Okay, that's what it means for it to converge. And this sequence converges to v if its limit of the partial sums converges to v. And so that's a Hilbert space. It's an example of what is called a Banach space, which is precisely just a vector space over C or R. It can be over C or, or R instead of just uh, C. Okay? So, and we remove that right there, and we're just left with the norm. And it isn't defined like that. These are all definitions. Right? It's just given, and it has a linearity and all the properties you'd expect from a norm. And so, this is a Hilbert space, and what does this have to do with quantum mechanics in any way? Well, what it does is that it allows you to talk about inner products and um, such over ge uh, more generalized vector spaces. So instead of it just being Cn, it can be any, any dimension, right? And it may be C omega, the set of all x1, x2, all the way down to countable infinity. Then you add the pointwise addition and all that. It could be a C uh, omega naught or omega one, the first uncountable, first uncountable ordinal, ordinal. Basically, meaning is that you couldn't list it out like that. You'd have to say it's like a sequence x alpha for alpha in some index set. I'll call omega 1, and there's going to be uncountably many, meaning that infinity is larger than the countable one. It's like the real numbers, but it's probably not going to be omega 1 for the real numbers, even though you can't prove that with a ZFC. Okay, so it generalizes vector spaces, and vector spaces is everything in quantum mechanics and the complex numbers. So we'll lead into the math behind the quantum mechanics next time.